Hello. So our plan for today is to talk about the table uh, that you're going to construct based on our strong carbon and hydrogen nucleophiles and the carbonyls that we've been talking about in class. So again, in this part of the class, we're going to focus on uh, reactions where we only talk about carbonyls as electrophiles, electron poor reagents, and we only talk about uh, strong carbon and hydride nucleophiles. All right, so we're only going to be making carbon-carbon bonds with our carbon nucleophiles and carbon-hydrogen bonds with our hydride nucleophiles. All right, we're going to get to more reactions later on, but we're going to just focus on these for the time being. And to make some organizational progress for these reactions, uh, I found it useful in the past uh, to encourage folks to make a table like the one I have behind me, at least that I've started behind me, right, which has the nucleophiles across the top of the page, Right, so we have our carbon nucleophiles, alkyl lithium, uh, and Grignard reagents, alkyl magnesium reagents, um, lithium aluminum hydride, and sodium borohydride. Right, and just a note about these reagents, um, Grignard and alkyl lithium react virtually the same way. We'll see in a minute uh, when we list the carbonyls that they have one difference. Lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride are quite different. Lithium aluminum hydride is our most reactive nucleophile. It's more reactive even than alkyl lithium. All right, sodium borohydride is our least reactive. And the key point is that lithium aluminum hydride is going to react with everything. Every carbonyl lithium aluminum hydride will react. Sodium borohydride reacts only with some things, right? So it's very important to recognize the difference between the two. Right? And, and in your reading of the book, you should be able to figure out uh, what sodium borohydride reacts with uh, and what it doesn't, right? And where it doesn't react, that's a box in your column where you just write no reaction, right? So these are all of our nucleophiles. Down this side, we have to list what all of our electrophiles are. So these are going to be all of our carbonyl compounds. Right? So let's just start listing out the carbonyl compounds that we know. Right? So acid chloride. Right? Uh, I'm going to add one that we haven't specifically talked about, what is, but um, makes some sense, which is a special kind of aldehyde, uh, which is formaldehyde. Right? And you've probably heard of formaldehyde before. Uh, but it's an aldehyde that has two H's. Uh, next to the carbonyl, not just one. All right, and again, we can start drawing our lines across the board. All right, and then we can put in our standard aldehyde. Um, we need to put in carbon dioxide, like many of you used uh, in lab. Very, very useful carbonyl electrophile. Um, then we can add in ketones, um, carboxylic acid, uh, carboxylate anion, carboxylate anion is a deprotonated carboxylic acid, right, and so hopefully it's clear based on some of our discussions that carboxylic acids behave differently than the rest of the carbonyl compounds, right? And this was one of our learning catalytics questions today, um, because there are two electrophilic positions, electron pork positions in a carboxylic acid, the proton, the acidic proton, and the carbonyl carbon. The acidic proton is going to react faster. So when we react any of these reagents with a carboxylic acid, we generate a carboxylate anion, right? Then the question is, is that carboxylate anion reactive with any of these nucleophiles, right? And the key here is this is the one difference between RLI and RMGX, all right? So I want you to see if you can figure out what's going to happen um, in this reaction and what the difference is between Grignard and alkyl lithium, right? And our final carbonyl is an amide, okay? And so your goal is 
to complete this table, right? which is to figure out when you combine these nucleophiles with these electrophiles, what happens. Right? And in nearly all cases, it's going to be either carbonyl addition or carbonyl substitution followed by addition. Right? We'll see that there are a couple of reactions that are a little bit different, um, that are sort of strange uh, outlier type reactions, but most of these will be addition or substitution followed by addition. So what I would have you write in this table uh, is to write down the name of the mechanism, because you don't have room to fit the whole mechanism, and the product. All right, so let me give you an example of what I mean by that, which is if we took formaldehyde with our alkyl lithium reagent, uh, that would react by a carbonyl addition, right? and that would give us a primary alcohol. Okay? Um, and Grignard would do exactly the same thing. All right? So that would be an addition reaction, and the product would be a primary alcohol. Okay? And so your goal is to fill out this entire table. Um, and again, uh, it's going to be very helpful for you to write out the mechanisms to help you start to figure out uh, what all these reactions are doing. Um, and then use this table, make a list, make some flashcards, make a poster, um, and use this as a way to start to organize the information. Right? After you're done with this table, I want you to make a second table. Right? And that second table comes from looking at all of the products that you have listed in the table. Right? And so you're going to have a variety of different products listed in the table. And I'm going to erase this and write out what those products are going to be. And your job is going to be then fill in a second table um, where you've just arranged things in a different order. All right? So let's see what that table would look like. So in the second table, what you're going to want to do is just have at the top of the page all the different products that you formed in the first table. Okay? And so, for example, you're going to have primary alcohol. You're going to have secondary alcohol. tertiary alcohol, carboxylic acid, ketone, and finally, amine. So these are all of the different functional groups you can make from our first table. All right? And your job is to figure out which reactions are going to give you which products. All right? But for example, what would you do for this table? We already said that we can make a primary alcohol by taking RLI or RMGX and reacting it with formaldehyde. So that's the first way to make a primary alcohol. And then if there are others, you would list them down in this column until you got to uh, all the ways to make a primary alcohol. Then you'd move on to secondary alcohol. Right? And again, this is just same information organized in a different way. Why is this useful? This is useful because we're going to move on to synthesis. And you're going to get an opportunity uh, to show how you could use different reactions to make a tertiary alcohol, for example. All right? So. This is going to be a very valuable uh, strategy for us and again help you start to organize all the reactions that we're going to learn.